If you're a BMW driver, this video might not be for you because today we're talking about turn signals. Today what I want to do is I want to talk about how a turn signal circuit works, particularly in a classic car application, uh, especially anything that's like pre-1990, before a computer controlled the car. This video is going to be part of my series where I'm trying to do educational style videos and I'm really trying to make the learning curve easier for you if you've got a classic car project that you want to work on or if you're just getting into classic cars or if you've been around cars but you're not super comfortable with electrical or something like that, that's who this video is for. So right here we have the basic components of the blinker circuit or the turn signal circuit. And um, obviously there's battery involved, there's electricity involved, there's wires involved, but the major components inside of that circuit are gonna be your turn signal switch, your flasher modules, and your light bulbs. Now your turn signal switch is kind of magic in a sense that it really is the brain of this system. The turn signal switch is actually going to, in most cases, it's going to control the turn signal, it's going to have provisions to make the flashers work correctly, it's going to allow the brake lights to work in conjunction with the turn signals in the case that you have a single bulb or a single lens that does turn signals and brake lights, uh, tail lights. Um, there's a lot going on inside the turn signal switch, and so I'm going to kind of cover a little bit about how that works, but essentially the turn signal switch is magic, and you'll see that look something like one of these, and it's inside the steering column. The lever that turns the turn signals in a classic car, in an older car, really what it's doing is it's moving the cam, the big housing of this switch, back and forth to the left position or to the right position to make sure that everything works correctly. All the magic happens inside of this switch and the switch has a connector that talks to, that interfaces with the brake light switch, the actual wires that go to the turn signals at all four corners of the car, power, ground, everything like that. Now, the turn signal circuit would be nothing without the flasher. If the switch is the brain of the operation, the flasher does the work. There are two types of flashers. There are what's called um, thermal flashers and there's electronic flashers. It used to be all flashers were thermal flashers. And inside of a thermal flasher, there is a spring and a heating element. And essentially what happens is the spring gets hot and pulls the heating element closed uh, to complete the circuit. That sends power through the flasher relay. And then when it cools off, power is no longer flowing through that spring because power is flowing through the rest of the circuit. When it cools off, it opens up and the cycle starts again. It gets hot and closes, it gets cool and opens. It gets hot and closes, it gets cool and opened. And what you hear when you hear the turn signals going tick, 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 is actually that process. Close, open, close, open. It's a curved spring with a heating element on it and it's snapping back and forth as it expands and contracts. There's another type of flasher, and that's the electronic flasher. And most modern vehicles would just have a computer do this. If you're retrofitting LEDs or something into an older car, or if you just want something that's maybe a little more reliable than some thermal flashers are, you would go with an electronic flasher. And the electronic flasher just has a circuit board in it with a timing circuit and some transistors and stuff, and it just turns the output on and off. Most electric Flashers have a um, ground that you have to add to them. They either have to be three pin. There are three pin flashers that came factory, even with thermal flashers, they had an extra ground. Um, you either need, if you don't have that and you retrofit an electronic flasher, you usually have something like this ground cable. Um, and the flasher just needs that to work. You can put it to any body ground pretty much anywhere on the car. But how does the flasher really work in the circuit? So what's really happening is when your turn signal switch turns on, the flasher is opening and closing the circuit additionally. It's an additional switch. It's an automatic switch. And it's causing the lights to blink. And that goes on as long as the turn signal switch is active. So right here I built out the flasher circuit as it would appear on a whole car. And I want to go over the elements of that with you. You have obviously the battery that supplies power to everything and is grounded to the chassis. You have 
grounds at all the light bulbs. You have light bulbs that are your turn signals at every four at all the four corners of the car. You have the flasher. Now, here is how I've illustrated the turn signal switch. Um, it's important to realize that the turn signal switch does separate the front and the rear flashers. Um, you have the steering wheel and the brake pedal. It's fairly obvious, but this is how these things are laid out essentially in the car. So when the turn signal is turned to the left position, you turn the turn signal lever to the left position, the cam on that turn signal switch moves into the left position. Power goes to the left side of the turn signals through the switch. Now the flasher is doing its thing, opening and closing the circuit, and that causes your left turn signals to work. Same thing for the right side. You turn the turn signal stock to the right position, the right turn signals come on because that's how power is connected. Now hazard lights. Essentially the same thing, except they have a separate flasher for hazards. They typically do not use the same flashers to turn signals. And you'll have a separate switch. The hazards will interface with the turn signals, typically through the turn signal switch. In most classic car applications, they interface with the turn signal switch. And that's essentially the same way everything flashes. You can see, though, that in order for this to happen, the front and the rear turn signals, they're, they're separate. And that becomes more important when we get into brake lights in a moment here. So a lot of classic cars have shared brake lights. The brake lights are in the same housing or physically use the same bulb as the turn signals in order to signal that you're braking. But how does that work? If you have your left blinker on and you step on the brake, the left side keeps blinking and the right side stays solid in the rear. For that to work, the front and the rear blinkers are actually separate in the turn signal switch. So you, you can see how I've illustrated that here. When you step on the brake, the brake switch closes and the brake lights come on. But now let's turn the blinker on. You turn the blinker to the right position. Now your right brake light is blinking. And essentially how that works inside the switch is on the right side, the brake light gets disconnected. Now the reason that this is important is because this brake light is supplying 12 volts to the bulbs at all times. It's not just a, it's not intermittent like the flasher is. It's supplying 12 volts to the brake lights at all times. So the flasher is supplying an intermittent 12 volts. It's opening and closing the circuit so that you get the blink. In order for that to work, you have to have the brake lights be physically disconnected inside the turn signal switch, and that's what happens. Similarly, on the left side of the car, when the turn signals are applied, you'll see that the left side of the turn signals are actually also disconnected. So you can see how this allows the brake lights to function and the turn signals to function using the same bulb. Now, I want to be clear for just a moment. There are a couple other ways this could be laid out. This is how probably 95% of classic car setups are situated. There's a couple other ways that this could be done. Um, the brake lights could be a separate bulb, in which case they don't need to interface through the turn signal switch. The brake lights could be uh, interface with a separate switch or something like that. There's a lot of things that OEM manufacturers did at different points in time that do not jive exactly with how this is set up. So I just want you to be aware of that. However, this is what you're going to typically see, especially in GM applications. It's going to work identical to this from the 50s through the 80s. Um, and you're also going to see this is pretty much how most Ford Mopar setups work in that same time period. Before that, things were a little weird. And since then, computers do a lot of the switching. There's a body control module in a lot of newer cars that turns the lights on and off. And that's not what we're talking about here. If you are building a car from scratch or you're restoring a car with a new like factory wiring harness or something like that, that car is probably going to end up using a GM style wiring harness, turn signal, everything. And that's going to work essentially how this video works. So in a lot of classic cars, especially GM applications, there is a feature called wigwag front lights or alternating front lights. And what this does is essentially the front turn signal, often mounted in the bumper or in the grill, and the side marker light, which is smaller, they alternate when the turn signal is applied. And the way that this works is 
it uses a double filament bulb for the front marker light that allows it to be a parking light and a turn signal. And it uses a smaller bulb for the side marker light. So you can see here, I've kind of illustrated that with a dual filament bulb and a small bulb. Now, when the headlights, parking lights are turned on, the dual filament bulb has, is connected to one of its terminals and that illuminates it. The small bulb has much higher resistance than this big bulb. So both of these filaments, usually one is brighter than the other in a front light. But both of these filaments have a fairly large draw compared to the small bulb. The small bulb will have high resistance causing a small draw. The resistance is actually significant enough, the draw is small enough that it will be able to be grounded through the other filament of the bulb. When the turn signals come on, this goes back and forth and you end up with an alternating pattern between the brighter filament of the front bulb and the small bulb turning on and off. And the reason that it turns on and off, I wanna show you, the reason it turns off is because when the turn signals are active, there's positive 12 volts on both sides of this small bulb. There's no difference in potential. So there's nowhere for the electricity to flow. When the flasher, when the turn signals are turned off, when the flasher is off, there's no positive 12 volts on this side. There's actually still ground on this side. And the reason that this works is even though there's a big resistor in the circuit, that resistor flows enough electricity that it can very easily handle the load from this small bulb. You might actually see that filament just barely start to glow or get warm when the circuit's active because a very small amount of electricity is flowing through the small bulb and then it's flowing again through this dual filament bulb. And that's how you get this alternating feature that not just GM products had, a lot of other products had it, but it was very typical of a lot of GM products in the 60s, 70s, and into the early 80s. For the sake of being thorough with this video, I want to show you how brake lights and tail lights can share the same bulb. This is pretty typical of a lot of vehicles to use one bulb for both your tail lights and your brake lights and your turn signals. You can think of this as your turn signal switch, the signal from your turn signal switch, which means it can be the turn signal. And if you remember also, it can be hazards and it can be brake lights, all of which are communicated through the turn signal switch in most of these cars. Over here, this switch you can think of as the headlight switch or the parking light switch if you have a dual position headlight switch. And what that would do is it would turn on the dimmer filament and that functions as your tail light or if you're on the side of the road that functions as your parking light. So when the parking light is active, this filament's illuminated. It's generally the dimmer filament in this bulb. It should be the dimmer filament in this bulb. And that's a very simple circuit. At the same time, on the other side of this, when the turn signal switch is active, when that flasher is connected, or when the brake lights are depressed, and power comes into the other filament, that filament is brighter, and that's going to give you that bright brake light effect, or that bright turn signal effect. And there's honestly no greater magic than that. The magic is simply that this bulb has two filaments in it. One is brighter, one is dimmer. So I know this video is a little bit shorter probably than the last few that I've done in this series. What I'm going to continue to do is give you a few specific examples of how different circuits tend to work and how I think they should work. And that way you can build them out on your car project. You can refurbish them if you have a project car that you're working on. You can make sure that everything's functioning the way that it should. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to answer them. Please leave them for me below. And if this video helped you, or if you want to see more videos like this, give me a like and subscribe. And I'm going to continue creating this type of content, this type of educational video for people moving into the future. Thanks for watching.